Good morning and welcome. We're here uh, in All Saints Anglican Church in Amesbury and welcoming our brand new rector, uh, the Reverend Dr. Nathan Baxter. Welcome, sir. Thank you. It's so great Thank to you, have Bishop. you a part of this, uh, this new welcome. church. Yeah. Uh, this is uh, Reverend Dr. Cannon Skillen, and uh, Susan has uh, uh, been doing a great job as interim here uh, at the cathedral and um, at All Saints Parish. So we're, we're, we're thrilled to have you and Tiffany and the family joining. Yeah, well, we're very excited for what's ahead of us in this, um, in this opportunity. It's going to be a great time of ministry. Mm -hmm. It's a will. It's a, it's a brand new beginning, both uh, for uh, the whole cathedral staff and for the diocese and for you and all saints, of course. Yeah. Uh, so you've just now finished this, uh, the rigorous search process and uh, the meeting of the people <laughs> here. What has been some of the things that you find yourself most excited about as you think about the, uh, the parish at All Saints? Uh, in, in my initial meetings with the search committee, I, I love the candor. They, they just were not um, trying to hedge anything. Mm -hmm. And yet it was a sense of just hope and encouragement and a sense of desire to follow what the Lord was doing here and in our movement as a whole. Mm -hmm. That immediately uh, stood out to me. And then as they talked about the, the manner of life here, right. the way that people relate to one another, the way that worship unfolds, their vision for the future, their appreciation of the history of this uh, parish mm -hmm. and the movement uh, as a whole, that sense of being part of something bigger than themselves and yet taking very, very seriously the honor and responsibility of doing their part here, sure. in this place, in this town. It was so, it was so clear. Um, and then just the synergy between the vision that they were sharing with me and the things I know that God has been calling me toward mm -hmm. as I make a big shift in my own life and ministry. Um, from a, a role as a college professor and part-time pastor to getting to serve full-time as, uh, as a pastor in a parish that is so healthy. Um, that is really, really exciting to me. Uh, and, the, and the fit was just so strong. Um, the sense of what I would phrase as living the hope of the reconciled church, that the church of, uh, that it is Catholic in order and sacramental life mm -hmm. of commitment to scripture in the breadth of the historical interpretation, mm -hmm. the sense of, of looking outward to share the good that the Lord brings in both word and action, mm -hmm. and of, of mending uh, challenges that the church has faced over centuries and millennia, most particularly of the, of the gift-based equality of men and women. Mm -hmm. That to me is uh, high priority and I'm so excited that this is a place that values that. Uh, so that reconciled church, that sure. to me is super hopeful. Mm -hmm. Susie, uh, as you've been here these, these past months and uh, as uh, the, the, the lead priest in the church, um, that, does that match up with your experience of All Saints? Absolutely. Um, All Saints has a sense of being the growing into its identity as the cathedral, mm -hmm. but we also have a strong sense of being an Anglican church in Amesbury. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. And so yeah. our ministry to the community is also important. We, and we enjoy having um, Rejoice New England from mm -hmm. the, the diocese and other diocesan um, events here, mm -hmm. but we also have a breakfast uh, every Saturday morning where we invite the, yeah. the poor and anyone who needs a breakfast to sure. come and so we serve maybe a hundred people on a Saturday morning. Wow. We're, we've just started um, an ESL class, English oh, as a second language class That's that, has, that began in February. Um, you know, we have, a, we have a charter school on our property for, mm -hmm. the, for the school of uh, the schools of Amesbury mm -hmm. and so there are ways that we have really wanted to let this the city of Amesbury know 
So we care about the city where we are. Yeah. And we're here to serve in the name of Jesus Christ because, mm -hmm. because Christ has loved us. We want to love the community yeah. that we're, we're in. You know, having, having been here now for uh, five years or so, with the, the reestablishment of the Sacred Heart School building as a school, a charter school here in Amesbury, uh, has caught the imagination of the town in so many ways that mm -hmm. uh, I find myself talking to people in the shops and, um, and even in uh, random meetings in the, in the neighboring towns. Uh, when they find out that we're, you know, I'm the bishop at the church in the in Amesbury, they say, "Oh, thank you so much. My family went to uh, Sacred Heart or Holy Family as it grew into, and uh, and so just a phenomenal uh, experience as seeing this campus begin to get revitalized as being a, a spiritual center for both uh, adults and kids and families. So uh, you mentioned the small group. Um, efforts that have been going on this past year. Would you, would you say, Susan, that they're uh, uh, multi-generational? Well, they are, absolutely. <laughs> you know, what, what's been so exciting is, you know, I said, okay, we're going to start these uh, groups in communities, and we have like nine different groups in various areas around the parish where people live. <laughs> and I said, we're going to read the book Emotionally Healthy Church mm -hmm. by Peter Scazzaro. And so I ordered 45 books. They sold out like that. So mm -hmm. I had to order another 25 and uh, they were gone. Wonderful. So I sold up Im immediately 65 books. And so people, uh, almost everybody has been involved in one of the small groups mm -hmm. and they've been going really well. We're, we have, I think, two more weeks, really, before we complete that particular um, endeavor with that book. But, uh, mm -hmm. you know, that's been amazing, the participation. <laughs> and so the, the parish is going to get to meet uh, Father Nathan and Tiffany uh, and the children this coming Sunday? Yes. Uh, at a meet and greet here after uh, Sunday morning service. Will you be present at the service? Oh, yes. Yeah. Wow. Wonderful. Be excited. That's going to be a great, a great new beginning. And then when do you think you'd actually uh, begin to, what would be your start date here? Well, we're still figuring out the exact start date, but it'll be uh, either in mid-June or at the 1st of July. So somewhere around that period, and we need to Great. Uh, figure out a few more um, logistics before we can name that date. Wonderful. But then uh, the other thing that we'll, we'll have to do together is set up a date for the service of installation of the new rector here. And uh, that'll probably be sometime in the fall, mm -hmm. uh, which will be a celebration for the whole diocese to participate in uh, uh, that event as we install the new uh, rector at All Saints. Mm -hmm. well, that's going to be exciting because uh, I, that spot on the floor right there is where um, I was laying down for my very first ordination as deacon. Mm -hmm. And that's a, a really sacred spot for me. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, uh, it's exciting to get to, to come and serve in this place. Wow. Um, there's, some, there's some real uh, strong affection just for this place, um, yeah. simply from that experience. And um, this is where I was confirmed mm -hmm. in my, uh, my Anglican identity. It mm -hmm. was just a, a lot of great things here. So it's going to be many-layered uh, event for me in that installation. Yeah. Yeah. A, a, a canon, you, you're the canon for spiritual formation in the diocese, and um, as you listen to clergy talk and some of the lay people talk about mm -hmm. this place, um, uh, you, do they echo uh, Nate's sentiment for the, uh, what goes on here at the Pro Cathedral? Yes, uh, I think that um, there are a lot of uh, people from various churches who have been here mm -hmm. for different events, you know, whether it's the Diocesan Synod mm -hmm. or Rejoice New England or um, the Anglican you know, Awakening. Uh, Anglican yeah. Awakening. Mm -hmm. So people have come from, you know, all over New Hampshire, Vermont, Connecticut, um, as well as Massachusetts. Mm -hmm. And they have seen this as, you know, a center of their connection mm -hmm. to the Anglican Church, to the, mm -hmm. to the larger Anglican Church. This is their, 
connection. Yeah, I know that's been my to experience. The Anglican Church in North America, and yeah, so so it has a pivotal uh, role really mm -hmm. in the life of the whole diocese. Yeah, yeah and, and you two have heard me talk about this place as a uh, obviously it's a cathedral, so it's seat of teaching, mm -hmm. and it has uh, uh, it's really the heart of worship for the mm -hmm. diocese. Yeah. And a center for sending. Um, it's the, the whole idea of apostolic ministry and being sent from here to, to start mm -hmm. uh, missional communities that gather around the to geographical limits of, of a place like this mm -hmm. uh, is part of the vision of being a, a church that multiplies churches yeah. and uh, for mission work both uh, throughout New England and uh, around the region. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Father Nathan, as you think about your, your arrival here at, uh, at All Saints and uh, what are some of the things that you're, you're hoping to see begin uh, afresh mm -hmm. or anew as you look mm -hmm. into the fall of 2014 and yeah. starting as new rector here? Well, one of the things that um, I'm, I'm so grateful for is the, uh, the long history of All Saints um, prior to its location here right. as a place where um, planting and reaching out and making disciples and sharing the the good news of Jesus in both word and deed. But that, that's normal. Right. That's, uh, there's, there's nothing that needs to kind of get started. It's more growing momentum. Sure. And that to me is really exciting. Yeah. Uh, the, pro the prospect of um, the, the many gifted people who are uh, deep in their character and have a great love for the gospel um, really sharing that and having that ethos of outreach multiplying mm -hmm. um, in the future. I'm also really excited about, um, about the small groups. I mean, mm -hmm. that to me is one of the ways that we connect the dots. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes in a place of this size, it, it, uh, it can be easy to think of yourself entering in as just a face. Sure. in the crowd and potentially anonymous, maybe unnoticed, and no one cares whether you are here or not. My sense is that's definitely not how this place works. Mm -hmm. And I think one of it, um, one of that, uh, the, the way to keep it that way is for our um, small groups to continue to be healthy places where people connect with one another on personal levels and are able to uh, pray for one another, to serve one another, to understand one another's experiences, to mm -hmm. benefit from that sharing of experience, and also then to be doing things uh, for others together, because that just multiplies. That's right. um, you know, one person doing uh, good for another is, is, uh, is essential, uh, having that multiplied by a sharing of heart and a sharing of hands, that's, that's uh, exponential, mm -hmm. and that's something that I'm looking forward to here. Ken, it's good. You got any questions for this guy as he starts his new job? <laughs> well, let's see, um, Nathan. Uh, what are? Um, I guess I would like to know. What are you looking forward to um, at in your own ministry? The mm -hmm. kinds of strengths that you have, and that you're looking forward to be able to being able to. Um, Put those into the ministry here in Springfield. Mm, yeah. Uh, there's been a number of times over the course of, of my life where uh, something that I really love that keeps having to stay at the periphery mm. finally gets to move to the center. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, in the early season of my academic life, it was I, I was really interested in theory and in criticism and in uh, understanding how meaning gets made in culture. That was central. And then uh, the penny dropped and I realized, wow, so much of our meaning making happens in theological conversation, mm -hmm. in spiritual life. And that was this peripheral interest that was growing in love. And eventually I was able to put that at the center as I went to seminary and put in the background some of those um, communication questions. And, it, and it's a similar thing that's happened as I've been called into pastoral ministry, of finding that, that the core of my passion for encouraging people to grow deep in their faith in the Lord and then do culture-transforming responses because of 
their personal transformation. Mm -hmm. uh, that's kind of had to be a little bit on the periphery right. of my life as a professor and trying to also serve as priest. And now I get to bring that to the center of everything I do. Uh, that is that is thrilling. <laughs> I am so excited. I can't wait. Um, and, and in doing that, that just means um, in, helping people see the riches of the scriptures. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the, it is, it, it, it's an, <laughs> it blows my imagination. Mm -hmm. I have loved the scriptures since I was in junior high. And that's been the deepest source of transformation in my life. And I want to share that with others, to encounter God in the scriptures and to encounter the people of God through the scriptures. Mm -hmm. And then uh, a life of prayer. I, my prayer life has been so deeply enriched as I've uh, come into the Anglican tradition. It's a, it's a place where we, uh, we don't think first and pray second. We, th we pray and then understand what God is doing because of the shaping uh, work of prayer in our community and the common prayers of our rhythms of life and then as that is a catalyst for uh, extemporaneous prayer that shapes how we do it. Uh, and, and so praying, getting much more time available to pray for and with God's people and to, um, and then spiritual direction mm -hmm. as I'm in training with you right, uh, right now as a, in learning this um, amazing gift of, of listening with another to the work of God in your life and seeing how more deeply to respond in just everyday ways to the work of God in this world. That is uh, such a profound gift, but it takes time. Right. That takes time, as you know. Yeah. And uh, having the time actually to commit to that kind of listening work with the people of God is so exciting. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, really, I, I'm a visionary. I mm -hmm. love uh, seeing big picture and I love uh, looking ahead and then asking how can we go there in a meaningful way that does good for this world in light of the new creation that is already unfolding and the church is the anticipation of all things made new all things set to rights not because we're we're you know, sort of triumphalistically uh, mm -hmm. fixing things but so that we're seeing that the work of the lamb Mm -hmm. slain mm -hmm. and risen mm -hmm. is uh, is already making a difference from below mm -hmm. in changing people and in changing uh, changing this um, this world you have such a, a remarkably different way of framing those, those thoughts that you just rattled off out mm -hmm. there in terms of uh, coming here I mean I don't think I've ever heard anybody say how do we make meaning in culture Oh yeah. Uh, that's just a, a fantastic topic to throw out there because people um, all around us and all different levels and strata and mm -hmm. kinds of people um, struggle with meaning and purpose and oh, value in life. Yeah. And, and so creating the kind of space, both culturally, relationally, educationally, spiritually, in, in mission and ministry, mm -hmm. so it's both action and word and conversation and community, mm -hmm. where we make meaning together and have um, uh, offering that to this community um, uh, is going to engage a lot of people in a way that will surprise them. Yeah. And so um, creating places of comfortable conversation and engagement with uh, every yeah. level of, uh, uh, whether it's uh, young people or adults uh, in, in this work is, is mm -hmm. going to be exciting to watch you do that yeah. and keep you focused on it in, in, uh, as we go forward together. Yeah. Um, because one of the things that, that's going to be challenging around the, because the, there's so many needs that we see around mm -hmm. a community like Amesbury mm -hmm. and around a campus like this, that choosing, um, you know, one or two pieces of direction would be really, really important. And so um, you haven't even started yet. So, mm -hmm. so thinking about how would you engage this congregation and their leadership in choosing that particular direction. Mm -hmm. Um, that God seems to be inviting you into as you go forward. Yeah. Oh. How, would, how would you, what are some of the things you'd like yeah. to do to see that happen? Uh, well, the, there's a, a long-term theme um, personally and in my own studies that, that listening, if you, if you want to show people you love them, you listen. Uh, listening is, uh, it, it, you, you, 
you might say, the bedrock of loving. And so my first, and, uh, and, and it, to, to say it's a task almost um, makes it sound weird, but, but it is a task. It's an obligation. It's a responsibility to really listen to the work of God in the, in the lives of other people. And so that really is the first thing I want to be doing mm -hmm. uh, in this place, is listening to what the Lord has been doing and what has the Lord been putting on the hearts of these gifted leaders mm -hmm. and their networks of influence. Mm -hmm. And as uh, we see some uh, things emerging from that, um, that's where we're going to test together in prayer. What will we put as the the few things that we're going to do really well in mm -hmm. this coming year. Uh, there are many things that need to be done, but when they need to be done, that's that's a matter of discernment together. Sure. Uh, so um, I can say generically that strengthening our disciple-making uh, life together, where we really are falling in love with Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, if we are doing that, mm -hmm. um, then you know, St. John says, then our fellowship is with one another. <laughs> Amen. And so there's a, a, there's a back and forth of that um, process. And when the world sees that we love one another, mm -hmm. they will also see that Jesus has been sent by the loving Father mm -hmm. to make the profoundest difference in, in that, that's even possible in this creation. Um, and so that's why I think listening is the first step toward loving and, and disciple making means loving God with everything you are and loving your neighbor just like you're learning to love yourself in the Father. Mm -hmm. um, so that to me is the first, that's the first priority. Wow. And then of course that, that gets us out in this community. I just want to learn what is Eames Ferry like? Um, I've loved doing that in Salem, in the church planting that we've been doing for the past couple of years in Salem, and getting to know the community, its history, its, uh, its style, mm -hmm. what it is that makes the culture of Eames Ferry uniquely Eames Ferry. Um, I'm not really fond of um, franchise, bland culture. Um, you know, it has its place, but mm -hmm. it doesn't make the world go round. This makes the world go round. So I want to get well, to know Amesbury. You know, it's a wonderful little town just to walk oh, around yeah. it. It's a beautiful town. Mm -hmm. Flatbread rocks. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, yeah. Commercials, yeah. commercials. Yeah, yeah. We'll have to get credit. But you're going to edit that one out, right? Now. <laughs> um, you know, with the river walking, the river yes. walk. And there's a lot of art, uh, artists here, yeah. and crafts. Um, you know, of course, there are, John Greenleaf Whittier lived here, and you know they're mm -hmm. a historic. He actually worshipped in this on this ground. Footprints yeah. on the historic sands of time. Historic figures, yeah. Yeah. yes. Yeah. So, so, uh, so it has a, a richness, um, just as a city. It's it's small, but it's very. Yeah, and, and one of the challenges that we're going to face is the richness of the campus and the, you know, the diocesan ministries that are here. That uh, spiritual direction we've already talked about with Canon Skillen and. Uh, that the uh, St. Aidan's house, yeah. the, the former convent on this property, houses diocesan offices and has uh, been the home for the Boston Fellows Program. Yeah. Um, your good friends, uh, Kelly Madden, yeah. uh, Dr. Kelly Madden, uh, doing that work. Um, we're now exploring probably birthing a new um, community, a, a religious community that would live there as an Anglican ministry. That's very exciting. House uh, that That's would be a part exciting. of the campus. Uh, Joshua Burns uh, runs mm -hmm. an outreach program called Veritas to the yeah, Children at guy. Risk here on uh, uh, Friday mornings with uh, two Gordon College students oh, good, good. Uh, that are serving with connected. him and he's looking to uh, run a, a summer program really? uh, on campus with uh, for the kids. Oh, that's super. Through the charter school. So, you, so your, your first summer here will be engaging with some of those students mm -hmm. uh, who will be hanging around for the summer, good. which is the first effort I, I think we've had. Well, since we've been here at that kind of work. Um, this, uh, this week, the team that has just been on mission trip in Kenya mm -hmm. returns to this building. Yeah. Uh, Justice Munyasia, a canon in the uh, Katui Diocese of Kenya, is returning with uh, Father Bill Bloomquist, mm -hmm. who's 
uh, now a priest that's uh, a member, a, a non-stipendiary fellow of uh, part of this church. So um, a lot of richness on the campus that uh, is going to be part of your uh, work as leading mm. this parish on this campus. What, what are some of your thoughts about that? Mm. I uh, Leading uh, alongside gifted people is unbelievably joyful. <laughs> it really, it really is. Sure. Um, and uh, and being able to uh, to notice how God has gifted and grown each person, and then encourage that uh, to co in, in ways of collaboration, so that um, so that we're not sort of doing silo mm -hmm. uh, separated ministry, but that there's. Uh, an interdependency of the sure. of the ministry that's exciting to me because it, as I talk to people that seems to be already um, a desire and an inclination and so getting to just strengthen that I don't have to introduce a brand new concept because that's my style of leadership mm -hmm. um, my my tendency is toward a kind of consensus and collaboration mm. um, style but um, but knowing that I can rely on someone to do something they've committed to mm -hmm. and to do it well sure. with a sense of the leading of the Holy Spirit, that is really exciting. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. And we're at a moment, we're at an Anglican moment. Many mm -hmm. people have uh, labeled uh, the Reformation of um, Anglican Church here in North America and worldwide um, that has drawn the attention of lots of our mm -hmm. Orthodox and Evangelical brothers and sisters. So, Roman Catholic friends, mm -hmm. and, and so um, uh, how do you see this church actually, this building, where we've had both uh, Archbishop Duncan, Archbishop um, uh, Zimby, and uh, Lord Bacala have all mm -hmm. celebrated here. Mm -hmm. um, uh, when you think about that part of the international communion mm -hmm. being connected to your parish, Father, how do you, how does that make you feel? <laughs> that, that is very humbling, <laughs> uh, because these are, are gifted yeah, gifted saints figures, yeah. who have sacrificed enormously for yeah. the well-being of the global fellowship That's right. and not only their own uh, care for their own provinces and, mm -hmm. and dioceses but also for us as a fledgling um, movement here in North America the riches of their uh, graciousness and mm -hmm. their willingness to love us and mm -hmm. to help us and to receive us mm -hmm. uh, so faithfully. That, that is just profoundly humbling. Yes. Um, and to get to be part of their, uh, their, their rising strength of initiative right. in, uh, in this gospel moment. Um, you know, we're, we're marking the 500th anniversary of the Reformation coming up in, in 17, and I, I wonder uh, to myself, is this a, a moment that might be marked by a, a fresh energy mm -hmm. of, um, of Christian growth mm -hmm. that uh, may be taking its cues from the struggles that Anglicans have gone through and are coming out on the other side with a clarity of what that mm -hmm. uh, connection of the Catholic, the Protestant, and the Charismatic might actually look like in the future. It's my conviction that that's what the church of the new creation might actually look like. Mm -hmm. um, not Anglican per se, uh, but certainly that uh, multi-threaded sense of historic integrity mm -hmm. in all three dimensions of our, of our faith life. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. It has really been great to have this first conversation with you, and I hope it's a uh, uh, we can continue this kind of conversation. Um, I think it, it will be helpful for others uh, to listen in to the three of us uh, have this, this talk. Um, we haven't asked you uh, specifically about your family and uh, uh, Tiffany, Kara, and Brendan. Kira, yeah. Kira, Kira and Brendan. Mm -hmm. um, what, uh, what are their ages? What are they thinking about in, in, in coming up here? <laughs> well, I won't tell you <laughs> Tiffany's age. Wise <laughs> men. <laughs> uh, but... Um, uh, Kira is my oldest. She's ten, yep. and in fourth grade. And Brendan is seven, going on eight in June. He's in third grade. They're both just uh, lovely kids, mm -hmm. and 
energetic and uh, they both have different creative flares uh, and just a lot of, uh, they make faces like I do. Uh, so <laughs> that's something that people will have to probably get used to. <laughs> sure. And, uh, and good, good quirky sense of humor. Um, my wife Tiffany is uh, just a wonderful, wonderful woman. Um, she is a vocalist and a voice teacher, so she teaches both a uh, private studio as well as at mm -hmm. uh, Salem State University and uh, at the Waring School for mm -hmm. uh, individual voice lessons. And uh, she sings, she actually has to um, leave early uh, from the fellowship time on Sunday because she'd already uh, committed to a concert in Rockport. Um, but she is just a, a wow, uh, I would not be who I am uh, today if it weren't for the relationship that we've had since uh, since, 2000, since 1997 is when we got married. Wow, um, isn't that great? Yeah. That's fantastic. Well, I, uh, I will never ever forget um, Tiffany's singing just to the right of the, the organ over here um, yeah. at a concert uh, for the Rejoice New Week. Was that well, a, no, no, it was, was, in, it was, was just before Synod yeah. uh, last November. Yeah. And um, uh, Tiffany was singing this, this echo part for, uh, do you remember the name of the piece? It's, I really should. Yeah, we'll be in trouble. Um, uh, it was um, the angel or something like that. Yeah, yeah, right. Um, Let the bright seraphim. There it is. Let the bright seraphim. Yeah. There you go. So right. Tiffany's, oh, Tiffany's performance amazing. of Let the bright seraphim uh, here, which is a fantastic classical piece, for me was one of the highlights of that concert. Yep. And uh, I was just chills. Mm -hmm. I mean, so for us to have both you, Father Nathan, and Tiffany here yeah. with us is extraordinary. And so her capacity, not only as a performer, but as a teacher, will be a great addition to the, to the whole community. And she's um, just a fun, fun person. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Well, I'll, I'll just tell you that um, when the <clears throat> vestry and search committee met uh, with you and Tiffany for, for a potluck yeah. dinner, everybody was very impressed with Tiffany. <laughs> 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 they liked her she got very the job. much. No, <laughs> no, but she helped. Yes, yeah. Yeah, well, That's she wonderful. just had such a great time there. <laughs> That's wonderful. Uh, Susie, any last comments for you, from you as canon and interim to uh, Father Nate as he begins his work here? Well, I just want to let you know that we are so excited about you coming. Mm, thank you. It's been... Uh, by the time you arrive, it will have been almost a, a year, um, about a year, mm. that we've been in uh, the process of search and through the search committee and then the decision of the vestry. Mm. And it has been a year of, of preparation mm -hmm. in a way, mm -hmm. knowing that we are preparing ourselves to receive that's been very important for the congregation to have that sense that we're um, becoming the kind of congregation that we would like to invite, you know, somebody really gifted and um, energetic and ready to, to move the parish forward. And so we've been preparing for you and praying for you, although we didn't know it was you. The and, Lord did. Uh, we will Thanks continue to pray for you. Thank you. So, Thank you so much. So. I'm excited. Very excited. Yeah. Mm. Father Nathan, you, you have <coughs> just heard from Canon Skillen that you are the answer to prayers. That's right. <laughs> and, uh, and that's very, very true. Oh, that it you, is. Yeah, and it's, it's such a wonderful place to be in yeah. for us to know that we can uh, arrive at a place and be the answer to someone's prayer, to mm. a whole church's set of prayers. Mm. That's right. And, um, uh, the, one of the works, Susie, that I'm, I'm reading right now is uh, Jean-Pierre de Cassatt's uh, Abandonment to Divine Providence, a mm -hmm. wonderful uh, Jesuit writer. And, uh, when, we, when we know that we are in God's will, he writes, uh, there is a great sense of, of not only comfort but freedom mm -hmm. and rest. So as you arrive, my dear brother, uh, you will be overwhelmed with how much you're supposed to do how impossible it will be to get it done, and how needful you will be of grace and mercy and the power of God. Mm. Uh, continue to know that in the duty that 
is assigned to you as rector here. You are in God's will. Mm. You can rest in that. And uh, it'll be um, the surrounding, surrounding you, you are so fortunate. You have both mm. Bishop Canon Skillen and Canon uh, Kimball and Father Bloomquist mm. and uh, deacons in mm. uh, Pipper and Piper, rather, and uh, Martha. Uh, dear Martha, uh, learned, that uh, served this parish. So, mm -hmm. so you have a huge team of people that love you and will stand alongside mm -hmm. of you as you go forward and keep learning and growing. So, um, so we close in prayer. Nice. Or do you have a word, a word that you'd like to bring uh, in final remarks in mm -hmm. closing? I, I, I think everything that I could say to talk like this I've, I've said and I'm just thrilled and, and excited um, one of the things that one of the many favorite verses I have out of, out of scripture is Ephesians 3 and uh, God is able to do exceedingly abundantly beyond I just love to pile up the superlatives there uh, exceedingly abundantly beyond all that we ask or imagine and then it finishes with, to him be glory in the church mm -hmm. and in Christ Jesus. And I, I love that. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, I feel like I'm getting a taste of what that is like mm -hmm. when you're in the middle of that being realized yeah. and, and made real. And I'm like, this is exceedingly abundantly beyond <laughs> anything I would have asked or imagined. Yeah. And yet I know that it is going to be glory in the church Amen. Uh, and in Christ Jesus. So it's going to be, it's going to be amazing. Ken, and I think that was our benediction. I think it was. I think we're done. <laughs> Thank you. Good.